Hello and welcome to Slightly Nostalgic. My name is Griff and we have watched Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1 Episode 18, The Waterbending Master. This is the one where they finally get to the North Pole and they want to start their training with Paku the Waterbending Master, but he doesn't want to train Katara because they have like weird backward views in their society about who gets to be a waterbender and they don't let females be like the fighter waterbenders. They have to go just learn how to heal. So that's really what this whole episode is about, is Katara proving herself and I guess a reveal at the end where that Katara's mother or grandmother was actually engaged to marry Paku and she ran away to the southern tribe and somehow that convinces Paku to go ahead and train her and they live happily ever after. I don't know. But first I want to talk about what's going on with Zuko's side of things. And first of all, we get to see Music Night finally. They've referenced Music Night several times uh, on their ship, I guess. They just have one night of the week or whatever where they play music and I always wondered what that even was. It's basically just like a few dudes sitting around playing some instruments and two guys were like slow dancing and it was just like, okay, I guess that's, that's how they entertain themselves on this ship. I just love when this show does that. They took something that was probably just a throwaway line, like they just had... Iroh reference music night as part of a joke early on and then they just kept referring back to it kind of like the cabbage guy and then it just becomes more and more of a thing. I love it. But Admiral Zhao crashes their music night party and takes Zuko's whole crew to go fight the Avatar and uh, he also, I forgot this happened, but he noticed the broadswords in Zuko's bedroom or chambers or whatever and figured out that Zuko was the blue spirit and then he tries to kill him. He like he sets a bomb on the ship and just basically he thinks that he's killed Zuko. But later we find out that Zuko survived and he's actually secretly working with Iroh who is pretending to be aligned with Zhao now but is actually helping Zuko and it's just really cool. I love when they do things like this where we're rooting for Zuko even though he's still the villain we're rooting for him against Zhao. But back to the main story, the Northern Water Tribe city is awesome. I love what they did with the animation there. They made it look so cool and also cold, really, really cold. I wouldn't actually wanna live there. It's just nice to look at. Like, what? It's all ice. Why would you wanna live in a city made of ice? But it's still cool that they do, like they have the water benders doing things like melting the ice to raise the water level to deal with the canal or what I know they had this whole canal system and then they refreeze it and it's just it's really innovative what they decided to do with that society because I mean if there were people who had magical powers who could control water like that and it was a widespread thing like you would have just systems built around that instead of like electricity and technology and stuff it, it's just cool to to see what they came up with with stuff like that. Their actual culture is strangely backward though. I mean, I guess I guess this could kind of be equivalent to like medieval times in the real world. So arranged marriages, it, it makes sense that that would be a thing in parts of this world, but I don't know, it just seems strange coming like seeing the the Earth Kingdom and seeing the Southern Water Tribe and seeing how the Air Nomads lived and even the Fire Nation, like everybody seemed pretty free. It seemed like everyone was pretty equal. It wasn't, there weren't, it, I don't know, this is the first time we've seen something like this where like females aren't treated as equals in their society. They have to go heal. Speaking of the healing thing, in a previous episode, the firebending master said that, like, he acted like Katara was kind of special for being able to heal. And Katara had no idea that healing was even a thing waterbenders could do. But in this episode, they're just saying, like, all the female waterbenders go learn how to heal. So maybe it's not, maybe she just is naturally talented at it, but it's something any waterbender can learn to do. I don't know. It seemed like there is a bit of a contradiction there. I really don't like the waterbending trainer guy, Paku. I mean, I don't think we're supposed to like him, but... He just, I, it was just weird. Like he's supposed to be training the Avatar. Like this is really important for the whole world. He's got to save us all from the Fire Nation. And he's playing like these stupid petty games where he's just like being rude and doesn't want to train Katara. So he threatens not to train Aang at all. And it's, and he's like, he catches Aang training Katara by just like, 
spying on them like he's lurking around at night just keeping an eye on them like dude do you not have anything better to do <laughs> like what is that about so then toward the end katara challenges him to a fight which didn't seem super realistic i mean katara is this headstrong like empowered girl but i i mean would she really challenge a waterbending master to a fight in this place they just got to and she needs Paco, everybody needs Paco to train Aang. Like, would she really mess with all of that just because she got mad? Like, I don't know. But the resolution to all of this seemed a little goofy to me. It didn't quite make sense. Like, the whole thing is that Katara's grandmother used to be engaged to Paco, and she ran away to the Southern Tribe. And for some reason, like, him seeing the necklace and realizing this makes him change his mind about everything like he was so adamant about not training girls to waterbend and then he's just like oh well okay i'll go ahead and do that now it's fine like it did i mean if anything i think it should have been katara's uh skill and her determination in the fight with him should have convinced him to be like oh okay i you're like the real deal here i will train you instead of it just being like oh you're gr i loved your grandmother back in the day so I'll train you. I don't I don't know. It I guess I guess it made him like rethink their all of his views toward women because this person he was supposed to marry uh didn't didn't like it. She didn't like this whole arranged marriage thing and that's why he lost her. But I mean, he was like she wasn't ever going to like him. So I I don't know. I don't know. The logic really doesn't track. They really glossed over that toward the end, but whatever. Katara gets to learn water bending. But that's all I've got for this episode. The next one is The Siege of the North Part 1. Very exciting. I can't wait to get to it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Okay, bye.